Hello Clevelanders! My name is David Robinson from the University Circle team and I'll be filming with Chef Zach Brule during this evening's demonstration. You're not going to see me on camera tonight, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about what we're doing before I turn things over to the chef. Thank you for tuning in to our first Circle food tour, one of the many offerings from Circle Connects powered by PNC Bank. Circle Connects is a full lineup of activities you can participate in from home or in the Circle. In light of the adaptations our community has made with COVID-19, we want to keep you connected to all the places you love in the neighborhood. Check out universitycircle.org slash circleconnects for more information. Today, we are at one of our neighborhood gyms. Labatro is a traditional French restaurant set in an old carriage house on the campus of Case Western Reserve University. They feature daily extensive specials and cheese and wine offerings. The team has adapted their indoor and outdoor spaces in some amazing ways. Clearly you can see their patio is one of the best on the east side. Our meal today is a root vegetable risotto with pulled chicken. If you purchased a meal kit from the restaurant, you have the recipe to follow along. If you got the ingredients on your own, visit universitycircle.org slash circleconnects to download today's recipe. In addition, there is an education kit you can download, which was also in your meal kit. This kit was prepared from UCI's community education team and has great resources to turn tonight's demonstration into a learning opportunity for your family. As you watch along, you can easily pause and rewind if you miss anything. Without further delay, now I'll turn things over to Chef Burrell. So what we're going to do today is a uh, Northern Italian risotto dish. Now people probably think that risotto is very difficult to do, but I'm going to take all the mystery out of it. Now risotto is a uh, Arborio rice, short game grain rice. And you can see it's a little different than the standard rice that you can buy. You can buy Arborio rice in the grocery store. Uh, and it's just a technique of cooking rice and how to understand that technique. Now, if you don't have Arborio rice, we're going to be providing the kits for you. But if you wanted to do this on your own without the arborio rice, you could do it with regular rice. Just have it, each rice is going to be a little different. So, uh, what we're doing today, or what I'm going to do today, is a uh, risotto with root vegetables and pulled chicken. And there are some shortcuts, and I'm going to show you the shortcuts, but I'm going to show you the proper way of starting this, at least doing this and doing it properly. So what you want to do is start out with anytime you're making risotto, whether it's with these vegetables or anything else, start out with some onions. Some onions and butter. Okay? Take the pan. The pan that you're going to cook the risotto in. And put some butter in. You're going to have to melt the butter and we're going to saute some Spanish onions. If you have shallots, that's great too. If you don't have Spanish onions, you have red onions, that will work. Now you want to wait till the butter is has melted sufficiently. You don't just want to add it in, it's got to get hot. Okay? We're not steaming the onions, we're going to saute them saute them until they're clear. So you can see that this, this butter is sufficiently melted, it's not burned. I've added the onion. Now you can follow the recipe with me, but understand I don't really follow recipes. I just cook. It's all very natural. But if you don't feel comfortable doing this, just follow the recipe. I sort of guarantee that it might work. So, you, so what you want to do is cook the onions till they're clear. And I will show you what that is. And when they're done, you can stop if you want. Don't have the time to do this dish in one setting. You do it in several different settings, and it will work. Normally this will take probably a half an hour, 20, 
20 minutes to a half an hour, depending on how hot your grain is. And this is done right on top of the grain. It's not done in a steamer, it's not done in the oven, it's just done right on top of the grain. Okay, so when, when the onions are cooked sufficiently, you, if you want to indulge, it's not completely necessary because it is expensive. Uh, saffron. Saffron is classically used in risotto milanese. Okay? Saffron looks like this. It comes from a flower. It's very expensive. Whether you can find this in the grocery store, that's another question. But if you have it, I certainly would use it. So, so the onions are, are put. They're clear, they're not brown, they're, they're nicely cooked. Now I'm going to add a pinch of salmon. It doesn't take a lot of this. And I'm going to lightly saute that. And add a little more butter. And then continue. Now, risotto is made with stock. It could be fish stock, it could be chicken stock, it could be vegetable stock. This dish I'm choosing to use chicken stock. I prefer chicken stock myself because it has a lot of flavor. If you were, if you were making a risotto dish with seafood, you'd want to use fish stock. If you, just, if you don't want to use a stock made with protein, you can use a make a vegetable stock. So you can see the saffron is bled into the onion. And it's got this medicinal smell to it. Now I'm going to add the risotto. We need the rest of the house for two cups. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly saute the risotto. Not really cooking it, but just cooking it enough that I will show you it becomes okay. I'm constantly stirring this around. So one thing that you're doing when you're making risotto, it's not a dish that you can just put on the uh, top of the heat and walk away from it. So you can see, it's, it's got this opaque look to it. So now we start the cooking process. Okay, it's essential that your stock, or whatever you're cooking this rice with, is hot. That is essential, can't be cold. So I have some, hot, some chicken stock here. And I'm going to start adding it to the rice. Now I add a little bit of time and stir it. And cook it until it absorbs absorbs the stock. Then I will add more. In the meantime, I'm going to saute off my vegetables. Now, if you wanted to, you could have added the vegetables to the onions once the onions were cooked, and then proceed. But my fear of doing that is that they, by the time the, the rice is cooked, the vegetables would be overcooked. I want to have this crunch to it. Okay, so you can see the rice is absorbed stock. 
Are we gonna add more stock? We're gonna continue doing this. Until the rice is cooked. In the meantime, we're gonna get our chicken. Now, this can be done ahead also. So, I prefer chicken thighs because they have a whole lot of flavor. But if you, have, if you made chicken the night before and had chicken left, and if you have leftovers, you could use those. Just pull them and proceed with the recipe. So, I have some thighs here that I'm going to season with salt and pepper. And then I have a uh, spice mix of uh, paprika, cumin, and fennel seed. I'm going to season it with that. If you wanted to let that sit, you could. Throw a little olive oil over it. I'm going to get the pan real hot. Put some olive oil in the pan. And that can see. Now you can see my pan for the vegetables is getting hot. I have carrots, celery root, rutabaga, and fennel. But you could choose your own vegetables. Chef, if you wanted to turn this into a vegetarian dish, uh, if you wanted tofu to tofu work, definitely. You can serve it on top. But it might be a little redundant. Tofu, to me, is almost like a rice. But it would work. What I'm going to do with these vegetables is I'm going to caramelize them. I'll salt and pepper them. And I'm going to, I'm going to caramelize these. Now, once again, this is something that could be done ahead of time. And what I'll do is I'll show you a trick with the risotto. And it's not really cheating, but if you, if you didn't want to spend a half an hour preparing this dish, what you could do is get it halfway done and then finish it. But I suggest the first time that you do this, that you do it the way I'm doing it, two or then you can play around with with the shortcuts. Okay, so I'm gonna put the chicken in a hot pan. Now, in addition to the stock and the rice, I'm gonna put some white wine. And once again, it's gotta be hot. Whatever you're adding to the rice, at room temperature, it's certainly not cold because the dish will come out lumpy and heavier than what it should be. The risotto is rice, but at the same time, it's going to be a light dish. So what I'm going to do is, I, what I did is I put this chicken in skin side down. I'm going to sear it heavily, and then I'm going to finish it in the oven put it in a 400 degree oven, 425 degree oven. And you can also see that the rice is taking on this color, this red color of the saffron. It's almost dying to rise. 
Now, if you're impatient, the best thing that you can do is just taste this as you're cooking. Because you'll think that it's done, but it's not. The trick is to cook this the way you would cook pasta. It should have a little crunch to it. It should be al dente. But the only way to tell that is to know when to stop. The only way to know when to stop is to be tasting it. So I'm going to taste this. It's getting there, but it's nowhere near. show you the color of these chicken thighs. I want them darker than that. I like that crunch. So I'm just going to keep them going. Now, another little trick to get them brown is add some butter. Anytime you're sauteing anything, and you want to get the color on it. If you're cooking an extra virgin olive oil or any oil, you want to get a little color on it. We add a little butter of the pan. Speaking of color, looks like I've got a little too much color here. Caught it just in time. But this is going to look good in the dish. Sometimes mistakes, sometimes your mistakes turn out to be your best friend. That's how dishes are invented. That's the color I want. Now I'm going to throw it in a, in a high up. I'm going to continue cooking my rice. And once again, I'm going to taste it. Yeah. Now, you've noticed that I haven't seasoned this yet. That will be the last thing that I do. Especially with rice, it absorbs everything. So if you're seasoning it at the beginning, it could be over salted at the end because you're cooking all this stock down. Stock is not seasoned either. see what it looks like. It's expanded, but it's still not there. Now, the easy, easiest way around this, if you didn't want to do this dish, Come on in to eat. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so one of the things that's, that we're going to do when this is done is flavor it some more and make it into almost a dish with its own sauce. But before I do that, I pulled a chicken. So I've cooked, I've cooked some other chicken, and as I said, if you had some leftovers, you can certainly use those. I'm just going to take them with two forks and just pull them. Now this is going to be the protein in the dish. Now, if you wanted to do this this dish, just as a rice dish, you certainly can do that. And you notice I haven't removed the, the skin. I like the skin. So at this point, if you want it, you can take your risotto halfway done Put it on a sheet pan, layer it onto a sheet pan very thinly, put it in the refrigerator, and it will stop the cooking process. Then, when you're ready to cook it again, you can proceed. That's the shortcut. That's what makes this something that you can do at home with guests. So I'm going to continue pulling this chicken. And once again, this is something that could be done ahead of time. And all you'd have to do is warm it up. And you can warm it up the little chicken stock if you want. You really wanted to take, you could uh, do the rotisserie chicken from Certainly. the grocery store. Yes, you could. <laughs> There's a whole lot of ways, shortcuts you could take. But I want you to see what it's the proper way of doing it. And then you can decide what you want to do after that. Okay, once again, we're going to taste it. You notice I'm double dipping. It's amazing how that has absorbed that color. It's a, it's a beautiful, so you a can beautiful see, color. You can see still has this crunch to it. Yeah, delicious. But it's not there yet. I think one more. Short chicken stock is going to be there. It's got this crunch. It's really close to understanding it. Now you understand if you make this enough times, you can see it. You can see how it's holding its shape. What you don't want to do is overcook this. Okay? And it's real easy to overcook. So, it's, you can always add more stock. You can't take stock. You can't, once, once it's overcooked, you've overcooked it. Yeah. It still will be edible, but for me, I'm always looking for that crunch, that consistency. So, one of the last things I'm going to do to this is add the vegetables. It might caramelize vegetables. <laughs> okay, so you can see the consistency. That did add some nice color to it. And, it, and it's got some some nice it's a sauce consistency now it is done so the last thing we want to do here's the trick we take some parmesan cheese salt and pepper 
And then the last thing I'm going to do is add cold butter. My favorite part about coming to Lamatro is the butter. It's everywhere. This is called mountain. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stir this in. Now it's essential that it's cold. And, and you can see that it's, it's almost, it's saucy. Now if you don't want it this way, you don't have to. If you don't want the butter in it, you don't have to do that either. But that's what I, I, I prefer it that way. It adds a richness to it. And once again, more texture. And finally, I'm going to finish it with some thyme tarragon and basil. And I put that in the very end. The reason I put it in at the very end is if you put it in at the beginning, it's going to turn brown. So all we need is a vessel to serve this in. Now, this could be an appetizer. If you wanted to do it just as an appetizer with the vegetables, you can do it like that. We're going to taste it for seasoning. A little more salt. And you can see the sauciness. What I like to do is take a little extra virgin olive oil, drizzle it over the top. Risotto with caramelized vegetables, root vegetables, pulled chicken. Okay, so leftovers. Risotto is hard, hard to gate how much to make and how much people are going to eat. So if you do have leftovers, what you do is you take it, you put it in the refrigerator and put it on a sheet pan and it will become sour. You remove it from the next day and you can take it and form it into balls. They're called souffle. You can add cheese to it, mozzarella, and, and then you can bread them with flour, egg wash, and breadcrumbs, and then fry them. And they're delicious. Serve it with marinara sauce. The other thing you can do is make a risotto cake and take it, put it into a pan, flatten it into a pan with some extra virgin olive oil and saute it and then flip it. And then you can use that as a base for proteins. So it's not something that you want to just throw out at the end of the meal. It, there are other uses for it. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our first Circle Food Tour powered by PNC Bank. We'll continue with Chef Bromberg in two weeks from Cantina. Cantina has been in University Circle since 2016 and is a completely kosher restaurant and catering business. Circle Connects continues this Wednesday at 6 p.m. with a live workout as a part of our Shape Up in the Circle program. Workouts will be offered online every Wednesday and Saturday through September. 
Plus, if you tune in, you'll have a chance to win a $25 gift card to a University Circle business. Check out universitycircle.org slash circleconnects for a full lineup of great activities offered by us and our partners. If you had fun this evening, be sure to let us know on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again and have a great week.